I've never uh, been involved with an organization that functions with such fluidity. Um, I'm, I'm told where to go. I'm told what to do. Uh, and, and I listen. I'm a good employee. <laughs> please, please, Appreciate that. Please, please don't fire me. Um, <laughs> But is it is exciting. That's what that's what makes it so interesting. I want I want to talk about your uh, your rivalry with uh, the Rock. Yeah, legendary. Yeah, and, and and what he's done with his career has been incredible. And it, you know, kickstarted by the WWE. You guys both have had prolific careers, and and what you've done for the organization is amazing. But I, the the rivalry with the Rock was one of the coolest things I think that's happened. It, it was for me. You know, at the time, you don't realize it. We've all talked about this. Me, mm. Stone Cold, Rock. Uh, we, we've all had these conversations at separate times. What an era that was and the talent and, and what we had to, to work with each other. And um, it, it just was a special time. But at the moment, it was just like Thursday. You, you know, it, it's yeah, so weird. Yeah, you didn't yeah. understand it at the time. Now you look back and go like, oh my God, it was so amazing and so wonderful. And, and the people that we had to work with, you know, on, on any given night, like I can make you a list of the most talented guys ever in the history of the business. And I was getting to work with them, you know? So when rock came in, you know, I was kind of just getting past my hurdles here and was sort of getting elevated into a position. Rock comes in as the new guy, you know, and then our careers sort of do this like alignment with each other where it's like, uh, we fight over the intercontinental title as two guys just trying to make a name for themselves then we do make name for ourselves and we're still fighting over the intercontinental title and it goes as high as you know ladder matches at wrestlemania i mean uh, SummerSlam, and like these huge moments then he gets into the nation and goes from being rocky maivia to to the rock and uh he's with the nation and i'm with dx and now we have this rivalry with those two groups and then we bounce out of that he becomes a you know a heel i'm the baby face still then uh, it flips, yep. and he becomes the babyface, and I become the heel again, and now we're we're having this rivalry over the WWE Championship, and and just moving up the line, Austin gets injured and has to leave, and and Rock and I, you know, he'd put himself in a place as the number one babyface, you know, right in line with Steve. As I was coming out of DX, I saw that, and I was like, well, I'm, you know, like one, I don't like being a babyface, two. Like these guys need a Darth Vader, mm. you know. As you had two, because you could just see that Rock. Like from the moment I met him, I was like, dude, this guy is so charismatic. Like he just gonna take this to a whole nother level, personality wise. As soon as he figures out what that is, um, and he did. So they they needed you only as good as the opposition, right? The antagonist only as good as a protagonist, and and vice versa. So I, I knew that spot. So then I wanted that. I wanted that king bad guy spot yeah um but it just worked for the two of us my, my only regret of the whole thing with rock is in 2000 we were um we were poised to have a match at wrestlemania one-on-one -on -one, and i think that would have been an epic th thing for both of us mm -hmm. in that moment the timing of taker's return and austin's return and austin wasn't quite ready yet so they pushed the WrestleMania match, and it's the year that we did this like fatal four way with Foley, who I had just retired, coming back like a month later with his hair all cut because yeah. he thought he was off now forever, <laughs> yeah. right? He was going to be a normal dude, and here he is back and and Big Show, and um, you know, like a month later or a couple of months later, we would have the one on one Iron Man match that we wanted to have at WrestleMania. And uh, it's un unfortunately for me, I always feel like it's the one thing like we got to this unbelievably heated long term rivalry and then never got to pay it off on the biggest platform possible. And I think Rock feels that way, too, is why a, a couple of years ago we did a backstage little thing. I saw that last night. Hilarious. Yeah. So and, funny. And that was literally him coming to me and saying, like, dude, I, I, I want to do a match next year. I'd like to do it with you. Like, let us have that WrestleMania match we never got to have. And I was like, I, yeah, I'm in. Why, right? did, that, why did that not happen? His schedule. Oh, man. Yeah. Is that you guys had teased a he match in like, in like 2014 as well that you guys were supposed to have that didn't yeah, happen? Yeah, it's was happened that... a couple of times yeah, and yeah. just, you know, schedule wise or whatever, it just c couldn't take place. But, you know, he, he's certain guys that I've worked with, uh, you know, just Austin, I worked with like, all the time, because when Sean was injured, even before I was in that position, I was doing all the main events with Steve, 
because Sean was out, right, and getting ready for WrestleMania. And so, I, I you know, of, of the opponents I worked with the most, it's probably Rock and Steve during that time frame. It was just every night. And, and one of the things that I realized with Rock is, you know, it's very competitive environment for all of us. And, and uh, sometimes that competitiveness could get heated and sometimes it was, we all got along, but it was, you know, it was, it was competitive. And, um, but we knew like it was magic, mm. you know, like I knew from the first time he and I got in the ring together and went at, I was like, dude, me, we, the two of us have some chemistry here. Like this is just, it, it's, it's off the chart and it's going to be really good.